Hey guys, welcome back. Chris and Randy here with WeBuyGuns.com with another unboxing video for you. We got a lot of stuff in today, so let's jump into it now. All right, guys, first up we have one from a customer in Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for sending this one to us. All right. Is this Stava USA? All right, so what we have here is a Zestava z -Pap. All right, magazine or Negative. All right, what we have here is a uh, Yugoslavian z -Pap M70. The M70 is the fourth generation of Yugoslavian M70 rifles. Of course, first adopted as a military service rifle in Yugoslavia, uh, currently Serbia. Uh, now they are manufactured for, oh, that's interesting. Uh, now they are manufactured uh, still abroad, but imported through Zestava USA. Now the Z-PAP has a 1.5 millimeter thick receiver with the bulged RPK style trunnion, slant muzzle brake. This has a nice walnut furniture on it. Really nice, actually, you know, a lot of people when they look at modern AKs, things you can get on the market today that are new manufacturer, a lot of people put these at the top. They are one of my favorites. We did a top five AK a buyer's guide maybe a month or so ago and this was in my top five so i really really like this rifle uh, what do you think about the condition of that one i did not see paperwork oh uh, here it goes oh, sir. here it is uh, honestly chris i would say very good to excellent condition yeah i looking at it don't really see much in the way of use no i would honestly I would call this excellent. I mean, it looks like new. Uh, I'm sure it's been used. It looks like the rear sight was replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, and the customer did say very good. So obviously we are good with that. So big thank you to our customer for that one. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have one from the same customer in Pennsylvania. Let's see what's in this one. Thanks for sending that in. Ah, the Savage. Bolt and bag and compartment. Well, there she is. As advertised. As advertised. Oh, okay. Ooh, you'll like this one, Randy. This is a chassis based precision 22 Magnum. Ooh. Bolt action. B22. Yeah. Savage B22, 22 Magnum. That is the bolt. So these I really do not know a whole lot about. The Savage B22 series. Savage has made a lot of really nice, inexpensive 22 rifles. Uh, this one is a chassis based rifle, so it's in an MDT chassis with a free floated barrel. Uh, does have a threaded muzzle, really nice oversized bolt handle has the Savage Axis 2 type, what do they call it, the Accu Trigger, I think is what they yeah, call it. Yeah, Accu Trigger. MOE pistol grip, adjustable uh, height of comb and length of pull stock. It's a really nice precision rimfire. Uh, reminds me of something similar to the Ruger precision rimfire that they came out with a few years ago. So really cool and not that expensive for what it is. Uses a rotary magazine. This does not look compatible with the 1022. It is not. Yeah, I'm sure it is not. So anyway, very cool rifle. Again, not much else really to say about it other than stating the obvious. What do you think about the condition there? I would say very good condition, Chris. Yeah, I would agree. There's just a couple handling marks on it. Nothing major at all. And that I believe, yeah, that is what the customer did say. So we are definitely in line. Big thank you to our customer there. So we will move on to the next one. All right. Next up is one that comes to us from a customer in New Jersey. Thanks for getting this one to us. Do you know, Randy, that these scissors still continue to make people unhappy in the comment section? Haters going to be haters, Chris. Very well wrapped. Thank you to our customer in New Jersey. Well, the rattly was that. This is a really cool one. This is the Ruger. 
This is the Ruger Deerfield carbine. Is there a magazine anywhere? I am thinking of yeah. cutting into that. Very <coughs> sorry. Wall wrap. The story with this would actually begin with the Ruger carbine. Uh, the Ruger carbine we've actually talked about on here before. We've had a few of them. Um, was a little bit expensive to make. It started with a full block steel receiver. So the receiver on the carbine uh, fully encased with a charging handle on the side and it fed through, I believe it was a four round magazine tube. Now it actually did incredibly well on the market. They did get sued by somebody. Who was it? The Deer Slayer. Yeah, they, they called it the, something that had to do with the Deer Slayer. They called it the Deer Stalker maybe. They but by Ithaca. Ithaca's because of the Deer Slayer shotgun, but the name that they gave it was too, it was like uh, too cl I think it was Deer Stalker, Deer Stalker or it may have been Deer Slayer. But anyway, so uh, Ithaca sued them. So they would come out with a new name. They, that they called the 44 Carbine. This they called the Deer Field. And essentially what the Deer Field is, is like the Mini 14, it has all the same aesthetics. It has a rotating locking bolt, side charge charging handle, it even has a handguard that looks a lot much the same. Uh, really nice walnut stock and rotary detachable magazines that feed right in here to the bottom also chambered in 44 magnum so it was like their later iteration of the 44 carbine starting off of the ruger carbine design these are really really cool uh rifles this one is really really nice i've actually I've, we've had a couple of the carbines like i've said but i think this is the first deer field we've had in here so really cool uh, really excited to get this one in and get to handle one, but uh, tons of fun too. So uh, anyway, what do you think about that one, Randy? Just a minor little safe handling mark right there, a little ding there. Um, but honestly, at arm's length away, I can't see anything. So I would say, I would say the high end of very good because of the dings in the stock. Uh, other than that, it would be excellent. Growth. Yeah, and and for the time frame, I mean, um, these these ceased production. I want to say 2006. Oh, okay. So they have been out of production for quite some time. Um, but given that point, I mean, it's been quite a while. I mean, if it, I don't know, I could look it up and figure out their serial number range, but this has been made quite a while ago, uh, close to 20 years ago at least. Wow. Um, so for that, given its condition, um, I would say it would fare to say excellent. I would probably stick to the high end of very good as well because there are some dings and stuff, but I would take excellent as well given its age. Uh, and the customer said excellent, which I'm totally cool with. So uh, anyway, really cool to get in. We do not see actually any of these. This is the first one. Uh, happy to get one in and share it with you guys. So again, big thank you to our customer in New Jersey. Next up, Chris, is one from a customer in North Dakota. Thank you for sending this in. Let's see what's inside. Nice. That is a CZ model 82. It's either an 82 or an 83. Let's take a look. 82. Is it an 82? Yeah, it's an 82. The CZ 82 would have been used by Czechoslovakian military and police in the 9x18 Makarov. The CZ-83 was an export in 380, uh, so this is the CZ-82. Now, a cool thing about this is this one has been, by somebody in its past, it wasn't manufactured like this, but it has been nickeled, and really nice sort of walnut CZ grips have been put on here. Um, interesting thing about these is like these firearms that are typically you find nickel plated by people usually look like trash. This one was actually done very professionally. I mean, this looks like if you didn't know anybody, you would say that this was a factory gun. I mean, the, the plating on here, they did a really good job of preserving the original markings. Uh, it's got some updated sights on it. So somebody took this, they really sort of beautified it, if you will. They, they I mean, they did a really good job. Uh, again, most of the time when you see things like this, project guns that people have worked on, they look really bad. <laughs> this one actually, I would say, is one of the first I've seen that like actually looks really, really cool. Um, this was well done. So. Anyway, double stack magazine, double single action. It's got high vis fiber optic sights added to it. Uh, it's uh, put some uh, paint in the rear side as well. Uh, really nice target grips. Cool little pistol. I mean, somebody would enjoy that as just a nice little sort of keepsake or target gun. Again, you're losing a lot of the collectability if you're looking for something as Czechoslovakian military surplus to put in a military arms collection or something. You know, a lot of the collectability is gone, but for something that actually looks really nice and isn't gonna be super expensive, that's pretty cool. So anyway, what do you think about that condition-wise given its reconditioned you know, nature? 
Yeah, yeah, and I, as you know, I'm not real, real big on uh, uh, reconditioning, but this, I agree, is a, a very good job done. And I would say, given uh, what's been done to it, I would say excellent condition. Yeah, as a reconditioned gun, this would be excellent condition, of course. To a collector, this would be poor condition, because right. all of its originality is gone. But given what it is, excellent condition is absolutely fair. Um, and that's, I, that's, uh, that's what the customer said, and I totally okay. agree with that. So very cool firearm, also a total of three magazines and nickel mags, which are cool too. Yeah. So. And I don't know if these are even plated by the person who did the gun, maybe. It might be uh, I think that I think that they were plated. They look like nickel. Yeah. yeah, they've been plated too. But I mean whoever did the job, they did a really good job on this. So that's flawless. But anyway, very cool. Big thank you to our customer there. We will move on to the next one. Next up is one from a customer in New Hampshire. Thank you for sending this in. Let's see what's in here. have here is a six hour 1911 that's the tac ops okay tac ops and 45 acp when it comes to sig products in general what they will do is they will take their standard line production guns and they have a trillion different sort of designations and models and configurations that they market based on all those different lines. So you have the SIG 226 TAC Ops, the SIG 1911 TAC Ops, all the different TAC Ops, and then you have the Elites and the Elite Stainless and the Nitrons and all the, the Legions. And so they make those across all the range of their different products. So this is of the TAC Ops variety in their 1911 collection. Now, when you come up with the 1911 from SIG, they took a couple liberties on the design. Their slides are iconically a little bit more boxy than the traditional rounded 1911s you find from everybody else. And your extractor is on the outside of the slide. Just a couple little bit of differences there. Now, being on the TAC Ops, I know on the 226, you have the uh, flare magazine well is a big thing with extended magazines, although these are eight round capacity, which is pretty standard for 1911s today. And you have all the tactical type features. Typically in black, you have the optic or the uh, accessory rail down here at the bottom. Skeletonized features, uh, hammer and trigger, extended beaver tail safety, ambidextrous um, uh, uh, safety, and then you have the sort of blacked out uh, nightmare style grips with the SIG logo. So it's just a really nice, sleek, uh, tactical looking 1911. And with that, I mean, the features are great. You have night sights as well. So very usable, actually, an excellent trigger on that. That's absolutely an enhanced trigger as well. Actually, that trigger is amazing. Yeah, try that. But um, very, very cool firearms, uh, nonetheless. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, so that's, that's a nice firearm. What do you think about the condition there? I would say very good condition. Uh, customer said very good condition, and I yep. agree with that. Just a couple minor handling marks. Looks like uh, a reason for that really nice trigger is it's had a trigger job done. So ah. they adjusted the hammer spring before the tr trigger job, filed down hammer hooks and stoned the sear. Okay, so they did a really, really good job on that trigger because it feels great. <laughs> so yep. unfortunately not a factory tech ops trigger, but it's obviously been worked on. So very cool, there's a repair invoice in here. So um, awesome, thank you so much for sending us that one. We will move on to the next one. All right, next up we have one from a customer in Ohio. Lots of guns have been coming from Ohio lately. Yeah. All right. Okay, Kimber. Ooh. Kimber! <laughs> Kimber! Kimber! That's the Royale with Royale cheese. With cheese. Yeah. It's a metric <laughs> system, Chris. <laughs> yeah, the Royale. <laughs> That's a pretty gun. That looks great. All right, the Royale with cheese is a 45 ACP 1911 with these faux, I guess you would call those uh, ivory. Ivory. Not to be confused with pearl. No. Only pimps. Only pimps carry pearl. Yep. What do we have here? I don't know much <laughs> about the Royale with cheese, uh, number two from Kemper, but Kemper, everybody knows uh, their name is very much attached to the 1911 design. 
they started first as a custom shop, but mainly everything they're doing now is production level. Uh, this is one of their higher end products. Again, um, I don't know specifically what puts it sort of in the higher echelon, other than the obvious features like skeletonized features, front and rear serrations. I don't believe the grips actually are factory. Maybe they are. Hmm. Are there other grips? I would tell nope. there's no other grips in here, but they look good on here. It's a good looking gun. I like it. Um, trigger, we'll get that. A, it's very tight. This thing, trigger's okay. I mean, it's not, it's not like that last one. But it's absolutely, it's definitely not horrible. It's an improved trigger. Um, beautiful looking firearm. Not much else really to say about it. I will get plenty of close ups for you guys to look at. It is a gorgeous, it's one of the nicer looking Kempers I've seen. Uh, so, what do you think about that one? Not a mark on it, Chris. I would say excellent condition. And that's what the customer said. I totally agree. I mean, the thing is spotless. So, a little bit of wear up here on top of the barrel hood, but that's just from normal use and racking that's going to happen. So, anyway, very cool. Big thank you to our customer in Ohio. We will move on to the next one. All right, Randy, where's this one from? Um, Little Rock, Arkansas. Finally. Chris. Something from Little Rock. It's a fine little town. I've been through Little Rock. Fine little town. <laughs> now we can say that unironically. Yeah. Hang on. Shipping targets. <laughs> yeah, we can use those. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis? Bob Dole. <laughs> Shipping target. We're getting our money's worth already. A Vota. CCP with a bunch of magazines. That is a bunch of magazines. So this is the CCP. I believe that this is the M2. If it doesn't say so already. These, um, the CCPs are not usually, I mean, I'm aware of them. It says M2 on paper. Yeah, okay. The CCP was one of those that required, did it require a takedown tool or something? The CCP came out at a weird time. It came out after all the single stack polymer frame pistols were really dominant on the marketplace of so the Shield, I think even the Shield 2.0 was out by that time. Definitely the first gen XDSs were out. Uh, I'm trying to think the uh, Glock uh, had come out with, or yeah, had just released the 42 and the 43. And the Walther comes out with the CCP, sort of the last to arrive. People didn't like it too much. It was a little bit complicated to maintain. I believe that this required a takedown tool to disassemble, if I'm remembering this one right. I know the PK380 did. I think this one did too, or maybe it was the M1. You guys can correct me. I'm not as well versed on this one, I will admit. It was a single stack nine millimeter magazine. It was shortly after the CCP would arrive that the new generation, the next wave of concealed carry pistols would come, like the P365s and stuff, which would hit the market a couple years after the CCP would hit the market. Um, so that led these to sort of be a firearm that nobody really picked up on. Uh, here in our gun store, I've hardly ever seen these come through on transfer. Uh, when we used to stock a lot of new guns, we did have a CCP or two around and nobody ever wanted to look at them. So they were kind of in at that weird sort of time. A lot of people, yeah. I mean, there's some people who will pick it up and like it, it'll just fit them, but it's one of those guns that just was really, uh, just never seemed to find a place. Uh, although I'm sure there are some of you watching who have a CCP and carry it and love it, and that's totally fine. Uh, but just, I, I never really saw a lot of uh, people really crazy about these things. This particular one has four magazines and original box. What do you think about the condition there? Uh, it's got some holster wear, um, a few marks on it. I would put it to the high end of good or low end of very good, Chris. I'm right in there as well, and the customer said very good, and I'm fine with that. I mean, it looks close enough. So a couple, couple marks on this side, some holster wear, obviously. But anyway, we're cool with that. So a big thank you to our customer from Little Rock for sending us this firearm. We will move on to the next one. All right, next up we have one from a customer in Pennsylvania. Thank you for sending this one to us. Oh, we have here, looks like a performance center. Ah, nice. Ooh, yeah. Eight times, 357 Magnum, eight shot. This is a performance center 627, 357 Magnum. Now this is in the performance center variety, so typically with this you have the eighth round cylinder or nice target grips. The barrel profile is a little bit different. It is a target crown barrel as well. Just a beautiful firearm when it comes to Smith & Wesson revolvers. There's just really hard to beat things like this, and it looks to be in really great shape. What do you think about that one? Oh, wow. It's pretty light, too, given its size. It is. And it's it cut, is. cut from in clips, eight round in clips. Wow. Yeah. I like this, Chris. Um, very, very nice performance center. Everything from Smith Performance <clears throat> Center 
is top notch. Uh, they've slabbed down the barrel um, to lighten it up, relieve the stress in the barrel, increases accuracy. Red profile is extremely thin too. Yeah, target crown, uh, barrel, fiber optic sight. Um, just absolutely love the performance center and it appears to be in excellent condition. Chris. I would say excellent as well. Customers are very good. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, it looks great. So big thank you again to our customer there in Pennsylvania, and I think we have one left. Yep. Next up, Chris, we have one from Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been through there once, my little town. Garden spot of Indiana. The Kimbray. She's rocked and locked. She is. All right, Chris, what we have here is a Kimber stainless lightweight in nine millimeter. And we've had, I think, one of these on last last week. We had one, we've had one the week before. These Kimber, this is probably the most common one. Huh. I would say okay. <laughs> this is one of the most common ones that we, <laughs> that we see from Kimber. Uh, nice firearms, there's nothing wrong with them. Alloy frame. Um, we probably even have a couple on the website right now. Uh, actually, no, I think it's we sold, sold today. It's yeah, it's sold, sold like today. That. There we go. We got another one. Uh, this one has fiber optic sights on it. So this is the typical standard room production stuff that you see, see from Kimber. Um, Kimber, there's really not much else to say about it than we've already said every time we open one of these, but they are cool firearms for the money. They're not super expensive as far as Kimber 1911s go. So anyway, real quick, what do you think about the condition there? Um, yeah, just a few very minor marks on it, Chris. Um, I think most of this is going to clean up, but um, looking at the takedown mark on there, um, I would say the high end of good to the very end of low, to the low end of very good. Yeah, I would I would put it in very good. Um, yeah, I would I'm go, critical on takedown marks. I would go on very good. There is a takedown mark, which so many 1911s unfortunately have. That's where people scratch it right here. A lot of people call them the idiot mark. We're not going to be mean and say that, but it is the typical 1911 takedown mark that you see. It's a scratch from the takedown lever that when people try and push against that that uh, catch plunger, they'll miss it and just gouge it into the side of the frame. You see them on used 1911s almost every time. Yeah. In fact, if somebody has a well-used 1911 and it doesn't have that mark, you know they really know what they're doing with their firearm. So it's really the exception, not the rule, to see them without that mark. So no real big hit on anybody if you put one of those in your gun. I've done it too uh, when I was newer to 1911s. And yeah, so every, everybody does. Right, yep. John? Everybody. Everybody's done it. Everybody. So. John just did it today. Yeah. Twice. Twice. <laughs> what? Twice. Oh, wait a minute. Which guns, John? They were both mine. That's coming out of your pay. <laughs> that's, coming, that's coming out of your pay. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us while we open these. A really great assortment of guns today. This is actually some really cool stuff. Probably my favorite unboxing we've done this year. Yeah, I think, I think they're yeah. a cooler collection of stuff. But anyway, we will leave you guys off with that. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And we will see you next time. My name is Francis. My friends call me Psycho. <laughs> what? Randy's a pimp. What's your pet name again? Ice Pick. Ice Pick. Ice Pick. Ice, pick. <laughs> Ice, pick. Ice Picks Bitches Better Ice. Be Wearing Jimmy. Ice Picks Bitches Better Be Wearing Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I flashed back to college when I was a bill. <laughs> Ice pick was a bad dude. <laughs> Razor blades, six six feet of pool chain. All right. Uh, you're scaring me. Hey, John, do you need a moment with the CZ? I you know, just a moment alone. I didn't take long. Just the two of you. That's a, it's a pretty good. <laughs> John's enjoying that CZ a little too much. A little too much, John. I have one question, Chris. Yes. Why does the Anchorage, Alaska Police Department put Bruce Willis's face on their target? Bruce because Willis, if you he's can, a good guy. Because if you can kill Bruce Willis, you can kill anybody. You can kill anybody. <laughs>